Well, for those of you who have been watching the channel, you know that I recently put out a video about one of the worst engines that General Motors produced, and that was the fuel pincher 8.2 liter 500 cubic inch Detroit diesel that was introduced in 1980. So it would only be fair to talk about what I at least think is one of the coolest engines that General Motors ever produced, and I'm guessing that a lot of viewers haven't even heard of it. Now, General Motors produced a number of engines with more than eight cylinders over the years, perhaps most famously the V12 and V16 Cadillacs that were offered in the 1930s. But did you also know that General Motors produced another 12-cylinder engine, and in fact, also 12, 16, and 24-cylinder engines over at its Detroit Diesel Division for a number of years? And that's going to be the subject of this particular video, is one of the variants of these greater than eight-cylinder engines, I guess you can call them. And that is the 12V71 Detroit diesel engine. So a little bit about the Series 71 engines over at Detroit Diesel. This is really the most popular series of engines that Detroit Diesel produced, and it really began with an inline six-cylinder 71 series engine that was introduced in 1938. That's right, all the way back in 1938. And these engines have a pretty easy nomenclature to understand. For instance, that engine that was introduced in 1938 was a 671 or 6-71. Most people just call it a 671. And that denoted six cylinders in line, and the 71 denotes 71 cubic inch displacement per cylinder. So you just take 6 times 71, and you come up with the displacement for that particular engine, or in other words, 426 cubic inches. All of the Detroit Diesel Series 71 engines have a four and a quarter inch cylinder bore and a five inch stroke for the piston. So that's common amongst them and hence why there's always 71 cubic inches per cylinder. Now that 671 was extremely popular in particular during the Second World War. It was used in a lot of American landing craft at the time and was overall a very reliable and great engine. It had some downsides. In particular, some people say that if it's a Detroit diesel, you know that it doesn't have oil if it's not leaking oil. Um, they did leak a fair amount of oil, and they were loud. They were loud all the way up until the very end when the Series 71s were replaced by the more modern four-stroke Series 60 engines by Detroit diesel in the 1990s. But that said... The Series 71 is just the quintessential Detroit diesel engine. As I said, it started out with the 671, and then it evolved to many different variants of the 71 Series engine. You had inline designs, and then later, in the late 50s, V-shaped designs were introduced. So you have, as an example, the 671, you have the 6V71 as well. So in the latter case, the engine is just in a V-shaped configuration. And there was the 8V71 as an example. But my favorite and the subject of this video is the 12V71 Detroit diesel engine because this is the largest Series 71 Detroit diesel with more than eight cylinders that had one cylinder head associated with it. In other words, there were even larger Detroit diesels that were based on the Series 71 setup, including a 16V71 that displaced 18.6 liters and 1136 cubic inches. But the 12V71 displaced 14 liters, 852 cubic inches, and it made about 1,200 pound-feet of torque, 456 horsepower in naturally aspirated form. It also made about 1,450 pound-feet of torque and 525 horsepower in turbocharged form. And these engines, you want to talk about a massive engine. They weighed around 3,200 to 3,500 pounds. I mean, just absolutely massive. And as I said, the 12V71 was the largest one that Detroit Diesel made with just one cylinder head. There was also a 12V92, but that had two separate cylinder heads that it employed as opposed to the 12 v 71 that just had one cylinder head. So what are some of the interesting features of this 12 v 71 and in fact the Detroit Diesel 
Series 71. So well, as I mentioned, they're two-stroke diesel engines. You can find them in inline and V configurations, at least after 1957 when the V series were introduced. But because they're two-stroke, that means that every time the piston is going up, it's compressing the fuel and air charge, and then every time it goes down, it is basically on its power stroke. So how in the world does airflow get into the cylinder and how does it get out? Well, there are ports located in the cylinder walls where the intake air comes in and it's driven in there through a roots type blower that's mounted on the exterior of the engine and that is what provides air through those cord passages. And it does so at really not a great pressure over atmospheric pressure, but just slightly above atmospheric pressure to get that charge into the cylinders. This is really why when you hear that a Detroit Diesel 71 has a blower on it, don't think of a typical supercharger. And that's why you see these with turbocharging on them. The engine was really designed to be naturally aspirated. The blower is just getting the charge into the cylinder because obviously that has to happen for combustion to take place. Now, when it comes to the durability of these Detroit Diesel Series 71s, GM got a lot of things right, right from the get-go. And these are extremely sturdy engines, and the diesels have cylinder liners that are readily replaceable. In fact, here's a picture of a cylinder liner. You can see the ports in there, and in the cylinder is a cylinder liner tool that a mechanic is using basically to jam the piston against the cylinder liner and use the piston's movement to push the cylinder liner out of the block. By the way, if you love learning about these diesel engines, the Detroit Diesel Two Strokes, highly recommend you go over to Bus Grease Monkey YouTube channel. He does a ton of repairs on these engines and uh, I think his videos are great. And so take a look at, at his channel. In any case, they have cylinder liners. Take a look at the pistons for these. Remember, if you watch the video on the fuel pincher diesel, you'll remember that I mentioned that the pistons in the fuel pincher 8.2 liter Detroit diesel have very short skirts. And that makes it challenging because the piston wants to kind of cock within the cylinder and create some abnormal wear. Well, here, look at how long the piston skirt is for these Detroit Diesel Series 71 engines. It's absolutely massive. So they have so many things that are right. And again, these engines are viewed as being very durable. Unfortunately, because of their two-stroke design and other reasons, they really didn't meet emission standards. And that's the reason why they were really sunset in 1995 and replaced by the four-stroke Series 60. Here's a picture of one of the cylinder liners removed from a Series 71 Detroit diesel laying on its side. And you can see those ports that I was talking about where that intake air charge would come through and enter the cylinder. Again, very typical of these two-stroke diesels, but that's how they got their air and fuel into the cylinder. So aside from the durability of these engines, which is generally pretty well regarded by many, after all, they were put into service in 1938 and made it all the way to 1995 as being acceptable diesel power in many different applications, not just on the road trucks, but also marine applications or power generators. So had a great reputation for reliability, aside from the fact, as I mentioned, that they did have relatively high emissions, and that's what ultimately did them in. But the cool thing about the 12V71, and I will say the 12V71 and the 6V71, I think are my favorites because they are the best ways of turning diesel fuel into noise, and beautiful noise it is. It's almost like when you're listening to them operate, you're listening to a race engine, even though they're not turning any faster than 3,000 RPMs, and in fact, they're turning more slowly than that. And I think that's really because the two-stroke nature of the engine almost makes it sound like the engine is turning twice as fast as it really is. But the buzz and dozen, as it was called, the 12V71, I think has just the best sound. And I'll show for you a few videos that you can hear for yourself how cool these sound. And at least for me, I grew up listening to some of these drive by on the road, as well as the 6V71s and buses and the 671s as well in buses. And it's a sound that just has stuck with me. So if I ever had an opportunity to procure a low mileage 
heavy duty truck with a 12 v71 i would be there if anybody has one let me know i would definitely love to have one, especially if it's a cab over but it doesn't really matter to me um, i highly doubt that there are many of these in low mileage condition left especially if it were a gmc astro Ooh, that would just be the creme de la creme in any case take a listen to some of these videos and hear for yourself and let me know what you think of what the buzz and dozen sounds like and if you find one let me know And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Detroit Diesel 12V71. What do you think about the buzz and dozen? Let me know in the comments section. Until next time, take care, and we'll leave you with one last sound of this 12V71 engine.